everybody, welcome back. If you are new, I am Ambrosia and I am the Eclectic Herbalist. So if you were watching one of my previous videos, the last three, I talked about this book, The Witch's Cauldron, so I will be talking about cauldrons in today's video. I have three. I have a large size, a medium size, and a small size. The small size um, is currently heating something up. I wanted to go into what a witch's cauldron is and what you can do with one and the very many types of cauldron sizes, shapes, all that. So here we go. I did in fact write notes this time so I may look that way every once in a while because I decided to actually plan out this video so it wasn't just nonsense. So. We are going to start off with what is a cauldron. A cauldron. Or, let's do this one. A cauldron. So, this is my biggest one and my newest one. I got it for my birthday at the spiritual shop I usually go to. So, we'll use this one for visual sake because it is smaller. And So, a cauldron is just a cooking vessel or a pot, a ritual vessel, whatever you want to call it. You can cook things, brew things, burn things, the lot. Uh, but basically, and I'll lift this tiny one up, this tiny one that I got, ow, ow, that one is hot. Um, you can, there are also like little tripod things that you can hook them on to hover them over the fire, but let's not get into that history of them so we won't go too deep into history because I'm not good with names or dates but way back before them being made of iron or bronze or things like that they were made of things like skull caps animal bladders gourds what else mollusks so I don't think they were doing very much cooking in them at the time probably just a lot of transporting of liquid definitely not fire they were used to carry water and fire but obviously things like animal bladders and gourds can't carry fire so probably maybe the skull caps were used to carry fire where while the other things were used to carry water or other such liquids next up we have types as you see i have three different sizes so there's a variety and not only is there a variety in shape and size but there is a variety in what they are made of all three of mine are cast iron skillet but they can also be made of copper bronze brass and silver if you work with the elements strongly you may want to look into those particular metals as they each have obviously a corresponding power copper they recommend using copper for the healing process so you'd want to use you may want to use, not that you would or should, you may want to use a copper cauldron. Cerberus, you were just out, my bud, and you were barking at our neighbors like they were, no. It's a two-year-old little boy, you're barking at him like a grown man. You're not nice. Go lay down and not stop fussing at me. Anyways. So, copper. Copper is associated with healing, healing spells, so you may want to use a copper cauldron if you are doing some sort of healing ritual. I personally don't have, like I said, all of mine are cast iron. It is the most abundant element and is associated with um, banishing spirits and fey and things like that. I don't generally look at the metals like that, but some people may, if not. Could you be quiet, please? You were just out. You are being rude. As you have seen, I have a small, medium, and large. Some of them do come with these three little feet. All of mine do, but you definitely want to pay attention to the length of the feet. So this, unless I find something that will be able to hold it up, I can only use like a little tea light, and I have to pay attention at how tall those tea lights are because I have some tea lights that will fit under here and some that do not so they have to like dangle on the side. I put her on the stove. I have I use this one for actual cooking um, like stews 
wash out really well. Moon milk. So this one's the kitchen pot. Uh, this one fits on my stove kind of haphazardly. We have to like, because of these and the bars on the stove. So we fit it on there, works really well, but I'd rather have like a, a little fire pit. My smaller one has like very short feet, so I don't put fire under it. Instead, because it is so small, I use it as my fire cauldron where I, where I burn incense, candles, and spells like that. So right now it has a coal puck in it and it is burning up some herbs. So this book does go over nine uses for your ritual vessel. I'm gonna be looking at my list and I'm gonna put it in my lap so I'm not turning away. But there are nine uses. As I mentioned, I use my smallest one for fire spells or fire rituals. I use the medium one for simmers or oil incense, Mo like mostly simmers, oil incense, and rainwater collection. So I don't cook anything I plan to consume in those two at all. Again, one of them has just a whole bunch of ash and then the other one I'll burn some oils or do some simmers in that one. And then, like I said, my big one I use for actual cooking spells and things like that. So there are nine, there are six other uses. I might just use mine for different uses, might not even be in this list. One of the uses is container, and that is, as it sounds, it contains or holds something. Whether it be a liquid or rainwater or some sort of... I just put it was a holder. I'm sure you can put any sort of ritualistic things in it. So a holder, a container. The second is a maker. And since the cauldron is associated with the womb, there are a few of here on here that have to do with transformation or rebirth or creation. So maker also as it sounds to make or brew things cooking, brewing. I made moon milk in it once. It was delicious. Um, I don't know if it was because of the recipe, but me and my kids slept really well. Best sleep we've had. The third use is transformer. Now this is for charging, burning intentions, releasing, or offerings. I obviously use it to burn one so I could burn intentions in that as I have before. These are very simple and very fast. The fourth one is the purifier, so you can use it to cleanse or clean things. I do not use any of them for that, so I would not know how that would go about. They are also known for being a conductor, like a line from our world to the divine world. So my middle one I would probably also use to fill with water and do divination in it since it is a nice solid black reflection that would see back at me or um, wax divination things like that so a gateway the sixth one is marker a guide a guide to help define a sacred space so for me even though this big one I use in cooking in the kitchen I do have all three of them on my altar also mostly because we live in a camper, so there's not much space for it to go anywhere else. But, so they are on my altar. You could use them anywhere, I'm sure, but they are as a marker for ritual spaces or for sacred, they are a marker for sacred spaces or ritual uses. The seventh one, it could be used as a drum. As a literal drum, so it's um, back in the day they used to put skins over them, little animal skins, and beep beep boop boop. Boo. Cerberus, those kids don't want you out there. Can you be quiet? Please lay down. Lay down. Lay down, my big fat head. You big shark head boy. Yes. No, don't jump. Don't. Like that. He's a pretty boy. 
So the eighth use is divination. Like I said, you could use the wax divination. So as I was saying, you could use it for divination. Ooh, for divination. And I'm sure there's, oh, burning smoke, which I do in my first one. The ninth use is rebirth which gives or renews life. I don't use mine for that, so that's one of the things I wouldn't be able to explain in depth. It was, however, in the book with a little bit more explanation. On to the next topic. I'm, this is really weird for me, <laughs> having to look. So, getting started with your cauldron. First of all, you'll want to pick your cauldron. I recommend probably going to a spiritual shop. I got all three of mine from the same spiritual shop, but I do recommend getting them from somewhere where you can ask if it is real cast iron or copper or if it is safe to use to cook. So when I bought this big one, that was one of my main questions was if it was real cast iron and if it was safe to cook in. And the answer was obviously yes. So know where to go to get your cauldron one um also if like you can get it other places then a ritual shop or a spiritual shop you can probably do that i'm just i mean like don't order one i wouldn't order one off of amazon if that's what you have go for it i would cleanse it really well but i would recommend maybe getting it in person rather than ordering it if ordering is all you have do you it doesn't take away from anything I just personally feel weird about ordering any sort of spiritual stuff off of Amazon or anything online I like to go and feel the energy but that's just me I'm not trying to, to say anything negative about anyone first things first location find out where you're getting your cauldron second find or know what type of cauldron do you want a big one a small one a medium and what are the uses you plan for it so do you plan to cook in it you might want a bigger one if you plan to do little fire rituals or burn incense or just use like one of the one of these little coal pucks maybe a small one would work for you it all depends on your plans and you as a witch so after you purchase your cauldron or get your cauldron, you will definitely want to cleanse it both um, energetically and physically. So you'll want to cleanse it how you cleanse all your other tools and things. And then you will want to follow maybe like a cast iron instruction on how to clean it but what I did was I uh, did not scrub it I used my hand hot water and a little bit of soap and then after I cleaned it and rinsed it and made sure it was completely dry I seasoned it so I took vegetable oil or olive oil and rubbed the whole entire outside and all the inside and baked it now I did not do that for my small one but I did it for the two bigger ones uh, obviously because I didn't plan to cook with the small one um, so I didn't also didn't think about it at the time because this is my oldest one it was the first one I got the other two I actually had to take the big one to my mom's because our little camper oven was not big enough but that's how you cleanse them in the physical sense and make sure you season it if you do plan to cook anything in it it does talk about feeding your cauldron and consecrating it I did not consecrate mine. Uh, it explained how to how to do it in the book, but I'm sure there are other ways. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that or not. If you want to, it did mention something about taking it to a stream, I believe, and running the stream water through it. I am in Las Vegas. We don't have streams to run through, and our lake has dead people in it. So I'm not going to do that. That looks like that is the end of the cauldron information. So once you have it cleansed and seasoned and ready to go, whether you consecrate it or not, you are ready to do whatever you plan to do. And I would recommend, because they attract dust, 
um, wipe them down very recently. If you don't already go down and dust everything on your altar, definitely wipe them down and have fun. So that is all I have for you in this video. I don't know why, even with planning everything out, I kind of still felt like I was just doing everything off the top. So I do hope this was somewhat informative. Again, this is from, I got this, you can get it off Amazon. I got it from my crystal shop. It's the Witch's Cauldron by Laura Tempest Zakroff. So if you want to delve deeper into that, have fun. I will see you in my next video. Hope you have a great day. Bye.